This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another informational Valheim video. Today we're going to take a deep dive into the Fenris armor. Let's get to it. So for those of you who are unaware, the caves update is currently available on the public test version of the game and you can check it out right now. The information for that is in the Valheim Discord. And with that update, we get the new Fenris armor, which comes with some pretty interesting bonuses, one of which is is an increase in move speed. You also get plus 15 to your unarmed skill, which doesn't translate to a lot of damage unless you are using the new claws weapon. Just your base hands don't do crap for damage. And if you have the full set on, you also get resistance to fire and the chest piece gives you resistance to frost. But the problem is, is this armor comes rather late. So I want to talk about if it's worth it to equip this armor and if the bonuses that it gives is worth it or not. So you are just finishing up Bronze Age and you are getting ready to go to the swamp to begin Iron Age. At that point, you can easily have a tier three forge with just a little bit of copper making the cooler and uh, two bronze to make the anvils that will easily get you a tier three forge with that tier three forge you can have tier three bronze armor and you can upgrade your fenris armor if we go over here and we just craft a little bit of fenris armor and bronze armor and we take a look over here at the upgrade to upgrade to rank two you need to tier two forge so we click that that's going to get us the bronze tier two then we need a tier three to get to bronze tier three if we take a look at the fenris leggings you need a tier three in order to upgrade it once and if we highlight over the fenris armor you need a tier two to even create it in the first place this means that you can have a total of 36 armor from the bronze and 36 armor from the fenris so you would have the same amount of armor regardless now obviously this means going to get it before you go to the swamp and in order to do that you're going to have to go just on the outskirts of the swamp and you would get some blood bags and then you would create a frost resistance potion and you would use the frost resistance potion to do the caves until you get enough to get the chest piece and then once you have enough fur in order to get the coat so you would need 20 hair five wolf pelts and 10 leather scraps which is doable you can do that it's going to be iffy but you can pull that off before you go to the swamp but you're going to the swamp in the same amount of armor it's going to be the same armor value either way and it's going to mean going out and collecting a good amount of either one of these resources because obviously you're going to have to spend some time in there to get the coat uh, to get the additional fur to upgrade it or to get the additional bronze so it's just basically a situation of do you want to take the extra steps to go to the swamp to get this armor to get the bonuses that you get from this so the bonuses that you're going to get from this is some frost resistance and since you're wearing the whole set you're also going to get fire resistance and you're gonna get an increase in move speed. Now, the unarmed is probably in most cases gonna be useless for most people. Unless you're gonna use the new Flesh Rippers as your main weapon, the unarmed isn't going to do you any bit of good because the unarmed skill still does not give you much increase in your basic punches, and you're probably going to be using an, another type of weapon. So we're gonna just skip testing any unarmed stuff right now because I feel like most people aren't going to be using these weapons you're going to be using an axe or something else if you want to see a video showing how good these weapons are compared to other weapons I'll test that in a separate video let me know down in the comments and we'll do a separate video on that right now I want to focus on just the other bonuses that you get so the fire resistance the frost resistance uh, and see if that's actually going to be worth it because the armor value going into the swamp is going to be about the same now, after the swamp, it's going to be a bit of a different situation. So after the swamp, you would be able to have the anvil and you would also have the grinding wheel. And that is going to upgrade you to a tier five forge, which if we grab a tier one Fenris coat here, we can take it all the way and upgrade it to its max at this point. Now, that also means that we can have a full set of fully upgraded 
tier four iron armor. If we equip that iron armor, you can see that gives us a total of 60 armor compared to the Fenris armor of 48. Now we get no bonuses wearing the iron armor other than a lot of armor. We actually get a debuff to our move speed by 10%. So we would get the same if we were wearing the bronze or any of these other heavy class armors, they're all 10%. And that'll come into play here in a minute, I'll explain. So if we wear our set of armor over here and we come over to this Draugr and we let it hit us, you can see it's only hitting us for 10%. So we're using a Draugr as our little bit of a uh, test subject here. We're going to let him hit us. So 10 or 11 damage. Now, if we swap over to fully upgraded iron and we let the Draugr hit us, you can see we're taking 8.5, 8.5, and another 8.5. So it's a pretty decent reduction. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, but if you're wearing full upgraded iron you're going to be going into the plains biome so what do goblins hit you for so i spawned in a goblin we're going to let him hit us and we're going to take a look at the difference in damage and stagger so you can see there 24 and we can take a full hit uh before our stagger bar uh goes all the way back down we can take a full hit without actually being staggered let's let him hit us again so 23 there and some change 26 and some change now let's swap back over to the fenris armor and he immediately staggers us and hits us for 36. Now I know food matters in that, obviously food, health, all of that. Let's let him hit us again, 31. So about 30 some damage. So wearing the Fenris armor, the goblin can hit you for anywhere from 30 to almost 40 damage. In wearing a full set of iron, the goblin hits anywhere from 22-ish to 30-ish damage. There's a pretty, pretty decent size damage reduction there going from 60 armor to 48 armor. Now, armor does have diminishing returns, so obviously the higher you get, it, it, it starts to diminish, but it's still a pretty decent amount of damage done. Now, let's test the fire resistance. So, if we equip our iron armor, and we come over here to one of the new cultists, and we let him hit us with some fire damage, you can see we're burning for 6.3. So you can take a look there, 5.9, 5.9. Yeah, it's a pretty decent amount of damage. And here we go with some padded armor just to show you. So 5.5, 5.5, 5.5. So yeah, about, about five to six damage a tick there. So if we equip the Fenris armor, which gives us the reduction to fire, we gain some resistance there. And we step in front of this guy and we let him hit us. 2.1, 2.1. So it's a pretty decent reduction. If we drink a barley wine and we step forward and let him hit us, we're getting hit for two there. So it does appear that it does give us a little bit of a stacking buff there. Let's try it again just to see if we can get back to 2.5. No, 2.5. So there you go. It doesn't actually stack because we were getting hit for 2.5 before. So that means that if you have the resistance, you have the resistance and it doesn't really matter whether you have the barley wine or not. The fire resistance doesn't seem to stack. You have fire resistance or you don't have fire resistance. So it could save you from having to drink a fire resistance potion, but you're still going to take damage from all the other hits. It's just going to reduce his fire damage overall. And if we just drink a fire resistance potion and we wear the iron armor and we let him hit us, you can see there, 1.6, 1.6, we'll back up, we'll let him hit us again so we can get a, a decent because it's not always going to be the same. And he hits us again, 1.9, 1.9. So it looks like the resistance that we get from the barley wine and wearing the armor that we're wearing here actually gives us more of a damage reduction to the fire over time damage than just wearing the armor itself. We also get the frost resist. So if we let a Drake hit us here, a Drake, hey, pay attention, hit me. You can see there, we, uh, we took a hit. It didn't bother us for very long at all. Let's let him hit us again. Well, there we go. So 9.9 .9 and we take very little damage from that. The, the frost effect, the debuff that goes on us 
doesn't last for very long. So if we swap over to the iron armor though, and we spawn in another one and we get hit, you can see 26 damage and that debuff lasts significantly longer. So next up, I wanted to run some tests to see how much of a difference in speed you actually see using the Fenris armor as opposed to using one of the other armors because it, it, it is faster, it's 9% faster, but how much of a difference is 9%? So I tested this running with the Fenris arm, well, walking with it, then running with it, and tested it against not wearing any armor, which represents the armors that don't reduce your move speed. So we have the rags, we have the, the leather armor, and then we have the troll hide. So none of these affect your speed at all. Then moving on to the bronze, the, the bronze armor does, gives you negative 10%. So does the iron armor, gives you negative 10%. So does the wolf hide armor and the padded armor. All of these are the exact same with negative 10%. If you're wearing the chest, it's negative five and the pants is negative five. The root armor is different though. The root armor is negative two for the chest and the pants, a total of negative four to your run speed. So for all of the negative 10 armors, those are all represented by the test you're gonna see here of the bronze armor. Naked is represented of all of these. So I ran the test against naked, bronze, and the root armor. And let's take a look at those results. So as you can see from these results, there isn't a whole lot of difference between wearing other armors that don't affect your move speed to wearing this armor. It's, it's barely noticeable with only a few seconds difference. Now in these tests, I line these up frame by frame. So it's from the second the arm moves in both frames, to the second that the foot hits that back wall, they are start and stopped. So this is about as accurate representation of the difference in speed that you're going to get. Not wearing anything or wearing armors that don't affect your move speed, that 9% is not the biggest of difference. However, wearing armor that does affect your move speed, wearing the bronze armor or the iron armor or the wolf armor or padded armor, is a pretty big difference. It's a about 20% difference in your movement speed. And you also notice a bit of a difference in stamina use as well to cover the same amount of distance. You can also notice a difference in wearing the root armor as well, although not as much of a difference compared to the other armors. Now, the interesting thing is that this is dynamic. So if you equip something that reduces your speed, so if I'm running around, with an ax and we highlight over that, you can see my move speed is now only plus 4%. So it is dynamic, keep that in mind. If you equip something that is going to reduce your move speed, then you lose out on that bonus, but you don't take additional. So the same can be said for wearing iron as well. So instead of only having a 10% reduction in move speed wearing the shirt and the pants and then equipping an ax would put us at 14, even if we were to say equip a shield, so let's just say something like a wooden buckler, that's gonna put us at negative one, where if we were to have on full iron, that's gonna put us at negative 20. So I would much rather have negative one than have negative 20, but that's me. I mean, I always gotta be going fast because I like to go fast. So that's gonna give you a lot more maneuverability on the battlefield. I think this armor has a place. 
Now, I've seen people talk about, and the reason that I talked about and compared it to Iron Armor is because I've seen people talk about, like, saying that it's it's too late. It's too late in the game. You already have the Iron Armor. But I believe this has a place for specific play styles, and I, I don't think it's too late. I think you could wear this to the current endgame. I think it would also be good to fight Yag in, especially if you're with a group of people. It has a very specific place for a very specific play style and that would be using daggers or using the claws that extra maneuverability you're going to get from using uh, items that don't mess with your move speed so as you can see the flesh rippers don't give you any reduction to move speed and if we come over here to daggers they do not either none of them give you any type of move speed reduction so using those sneaking in and being like a more rogue style build it's going to be super handy. Now, I don't know if you would want to do it with unarmed currently as the game only has one technical unarmed option and that is the flesh rippers. I feel like the bonus currently, remember the game is not done. We will possibly get other unarmed options. It's going to be kind of dumb if we do not, but currently that unarmed bonus is kind of useless. However, that move speed bonus, the frost reduction and the fire reduction, that's pretty handy. That's two resistances and one set of armor with an increase in move speed and pretty decent armor value at 48. Having it maxed out at level four is not too bad. And what you need to upgrade it is not too terrible to get a hold of as well. So is the Fenris armor the most OP, most amazing armor ever? No, I don't think so. Does it have its place for a specific play style? Yes. I think they hit the nail on the head there is, is having this as like a rogue class style armor, uh, a little bit more than the troll hide or maybe even an upgrade to the troll hide. While the troll hide makes you sneaky, this gives you that speed boost, which is going to probably pay off a little more than the being sneaky part. And it also gives you a lot more durability compared to the troll armor as well. But let me know what you guys think about it down in the comment section. I'm eager to hear your all's thoughts. I think they're working their way to something pretty nice here with these different armors and different creating different types of play styles. Like I said, this one's gonna have its place maybe a little more in the future once we get some more unarmed options or some more weapon options that don't reduce your speed. I can definitely see some uses for this armor in that sense of kind of like this rogue quick get in, hit a few strikes, get out play style. Um, it kind of sucks having that unarmed bonus on it right now, but once again, you have to remember the game is not complete. It is an early access game. I'm sure we'll get some more unarmed options later on. They probably just threw these in now as kind of like a test. I would like to see some earlier unarmed options so that you can start to upgrade your unarmed skill or level that unarmed skill up before you get to the Fenris armor because it kind of sucks right now you don't really want to just go around punching everything that's terrible so you're basically not going to have any unarmed skill at all by the time you get the Fenris armor and you're going to be starting with just the bonus 15 that it gives you I would like to see something early game to allow you to start to level your unarmed skill up so that by the time you get the Fenris armor you're at a nice like 20 maybe 30 uh, and skill level by the time you get it kind of on par with the progression of everything else right now it lacks a lot of the necessary progression to make this armor valuable for unarmed players currently the way the game is now you would want to be using daggers with this armor instead so you would be using your daggers early on getting that skill up and then using that with the armor which kind of just makes the unarmed skill part of this useless everything else though is pretty nice anyway let me know what you all think down in the comments that's going to wrap it up for this one if you like what you saw consider hitting the subscribe button notification bell all that good stuff so you'd be notified when i upload other videos i'll get absolute massive shout out and thank you to my supporters on patreon for making this episode possible y'all are absolutely amazing people if you'd like to join my leaker patreon supporters please check out the link in the description below if you enjoyed this video please leave a comment down below let me know what you thought if you're shy you don't like to comment just hit that thumbs up button and share your support until next time thanks for watching